I am Anil Kumar and in this series of rearranging formulas and understanding or reviewing what we have learned earlier, uh, we will take up uh, now rearranging a quadratic function so that we could understand its transformation and find maximum or minimum value, right? So for that, let me take one example. Let us say the function f of x, I could have written y equals to also, is equals to 2x square minus 6x uh, plus, let us say, we write a number 3 here. Okay, so the idea is to find the maximum or minimum, right? So first we have to find maximum or minimum and then we have to sketch the the parabola, right? So that is the idea to do this exercise. To find maximum or minimum, we have to complete the squares. So the method being applied here will be completing the squares. There are, however, other methods also. A method of partial factoring is, in fact, more effective. So we will also uh, apply partial factoring. I'll discuss that also with you, partial factor. So let's not forget about it. So at the end, we will do partial factor. You will appreciate how easy and effective it is and then wonder why we do completing the squares. But let us start with completing the squares, which is a very standard way of doing it. Let me write the equation as y equals to 2x square minus 6x plus 3. To complete the square, first factor out the leading coefficient, which is 2 in this case. So we are left with 2x square minus 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3x, and keep this number away. Now we have x square minus 3x. Take half of the number 3, the coefficient of x, add and subtract its square. So half is 3 over 2, add its square and subtract its square. All this go into the bracket, keep that number 3 away. Now continue this simplification. What you notice is that the first three terms form a perfect square. That will always happen. Take x from here, the negative sign, in this case it's this sign, whatever it is, in this case it is negative, and then that number, which is 3 over 2, and square it. Now square the negative 3 over 2 whole square, you get 9 over 4, plus 3. Now open the bracket, so you get 2 times x minus 3 over 2 whole square minus 2 times 9 divided by 4 gives you 9 over 2, plus 3. Now, combine these two terms. We have 2 times x minus 3 over 2. Sometimes you can write as fraction also. Now, minus 9 over 2, we need to have common base. So, I'll do 6 over 2 for this number. Okay, so we have 2 times x minus 3 over 2 whole square minus, okay, this was 6 over 2 right so it is minus 9 plus 6 so it is minus 3 over 2 here okay so we get the same numbers okay anyway now from here we can say what is the vertex can you tell me what is the vertex vertex for this parabola is at 3 over 2 that 3 over 2 for x value makes this part 0 so when this is 0 what do you get you get minus 3 over 2 so the value is minus 3 over 2 at x equals to 3 over 2. That is what you get. Now, when you analyze this particular function, 2 is positive, right? Leading coefficient, that means it is a parabola which opens upwards. Since it opens upwards, what do we have? We have minimum, correct? So in this particular case, uh, I will write this equation as equal to, let me write down here now, as 2 times x minus 3 over 2, or you can write 1, 1. 1.5, whole square minus 1.5 or 3 over 2. Correct? Now, so that is your parabola. Now, let me discuss partial factoring before I forget, right? Because I am in, now in the habit of forgetting things. So, we'll redo the work with this equation. Let me draw a line here. Okay, we can sketch in the center, and I'll discuss partial factoring on this side. So we'll work with the same equation, y equals to 2x squared minus 6x plus 3. Partial factoring really means do not factor the whole thing. Just factor this 
the first two terms what is common between them 2x is common okay so write 2x and you're left with x minus 6 I mean 3 right 6 divided by 2 and here you get plus 3 now what do you notice what is the y-intercept? y-intercept is when x is 0. So if x is 0, if I write x equals to 0, then I get y equals to 3. Then I get y equals to 3. Is that okay? Now how about if I write x equals to 3? If I write x equals to 3, even then my this factor is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So I get y equals to 3. Perfect. So what you notice in this particular case is that with one factor you get y-intercept, right? With one factor you get y-intercept. With the other factor you get the image of the y-intercept, correct? So so your y-intercept in this case is 3 uh, and the image of the y-intercept is at x equals to 3 it is 3. The parabola is opening upwards. Do you see that part, right? So these are very critical points. And how do you get the vertex? That was the main question. The axis, now these two are the image and these points, they have same y values. So the axis will go right through the center of these two, right? So the axis of the curve, parable in this case, will be x equals to average of these. That means 0 plus 3 divided by 2, which is 3 over 2. Do you get it? So as you can see here, the vertex V, let's say, is 3 over 2 and the minimum value is minus 3 over 2. Do you see? At 3 over 2, the minimum value is 3. So we get the same axis value x equals to 3 over 2 using this formula in two steps rather than so many. That's a huge advantage and therefore I prefer to use partial factoring for most of my questions. And I'll recommend you to use the same formula, correct? Okay, now let's get back to the question. Here we have, so we have vertex at 3 over 2, which is positive, and the value is minus 1.5. Now let us see how to sketch this function, correct? So, <clears throat> the one, okay, let me just draw the axis, correct? So what we have here is the vertex at 1.5, and minus 1.5 so so let me make some scale here so we have one two three four five let us say one two okay so this is one two three one two three four five six parabola is opening upwards that we know let's now figure out where the vertex is so vertex x value is 1.5 so this is my one two 1 1.5 is kind of here and uh, value is minus 1.5 so minus 1.5 so that becomes our vertex now from here these are called the steps two times normally the steps are let me write down here now to understand steps you know the vertex steps are two times and normally the parabola x square will go one three five seven so in this case it is going by 2, 6, 5 and so it really means that if you move a step here one unit away then you go two steps up. 2 means if you add 2 to minus 1.5 you reach 0.5 correct. So if you move one step here so this is 1.5 that means 0.5 you reach this point halfway. So kind of the parabola now I'm just sketching the parabola without getting into a lot of details here okay I mean Okay, I just draw so that is that is how it's not such a neat curve, but you know you have understood the idea. So the idea here is that first locate your vertex and then follow the steps one three five seven. And it's always a good idea to even before I started doing it, I should have marked three as my point for y intercept. I should do it now. If x is zero, my y intercept is three, so that's a point I should not forget. So what I'm doing is I'm redrawing this half, which is not really a good portion okay now it's better right so that is my parabola forget about this okay so let me redo this that is how the parabola is right it makes more sense correct so so that is how the parabola is going to be for the given equation if you put so you find the steps and as a check 
what we have is the y-intercept. Y-intercept is f of 0, right? Just plug in 0 and 3 is your answer. So 3 is your y-intercept. So that is how you could actually sketch your parable. I hope all these things bring uh, our learnings together and helps you to understand how we could rearrange our quadratic equation uh, find maximum or minimum in this case since it opens upwards we have minimum correct so we have minimum value of minus 1.5 at x equals to 1.5 so that is how we could actually summarize these particular learnings but I hope it gives you an insight of how to work with quadratic functions thank you and all the best